Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a Stuart Turner model steam engine. It's a 10H mill engine. I picked it up at a car boot sale. It's a pretty sweet little thing and we'll have a closer look at it in a minute. But let's, uh, let's see if I can run it on my own compressed air first. <gasps> yeah, out of breath already. Right, let's have a closer look. Hi there, it's Boots Owen here. This is a little model steam engine that I picked up. It's a Stuart 10H, H for horizontal. It's a little model of an old mill engine from I don't know when, over a hundred years ago I guess. It's a sweet little thing, quite attractive on a wooden base, all cast iron or some kind of, yeah I presume it's all cast iron and bits of brass or bronze or some other kind of metal that Stuart Turner will have used. It's got a piston steam piston up on this end, steam box here, inlet and exhaust for steam, uh, kind of a timing rod, I don't know what that's called, I don't know much about steam engines, and this one here is a con rod, crankshaft down there, so this opens and closes the steam valves in the steam box to let the steam in and out of the cylinder. Now you can see straight off that there's a bit of play there in the big end. Not even the big end, the big end's here, so. Let's see if we can see that. Play in the big end there. Play in the crankshaft bearings. And there's a bit of play here, but I'm not as worried about that but it's quite loose. There's a bit of wonder in that flywheel, but with a bit of light oil, and I haven't really used any steam oil or any kind of heavy oil, because I don't have anything as heavy as steam oil, it makes a good seal and it runs on compressed air. So I've just got a bicycle pump here. I don't want to bring the compressed air line out to the garage. Just start it off. And it's quite an attractive little thing. You should be able to see this is running a little bit eccentric. So it suggests that either the bore through the centre of the flywheel isn't true or something to do with the crankshaft isn't 100%. It might have taken a fall at some point and bent the crankshaft, I don't know. It's not. It's not a big deal. And the person who's built this has chosen to paint it in green to leave some bits exposed but then to put paint on some bits and I've heard different people talking about these on the internet and saying you know you should paint this and you shouldn't paint that. I think they all seem to be painted differently and it seems to be a matter of preference as to what you choose. There's the S for Stuart Turner. It's quite small, what would that be there? Let's get a ruler. Let's do it in inches. So from the casting to the end of the casting is about six inches long. From the wood up, the overall height is about three inches, three and three and a quarter really. They're getting parallax on that video. Three and a quarter. Flywheel diameter, three inch. The thickness of the flywheel is just under half an inch there, maybe almost half an inch. I don't know what the bore is inside. Three quarter inch maybe. Yeah, it seems a nice little model. I quite enjoy having it. I'm not sure what to do with it. They appear to be quite valuable. I remember looking at these as a teenager and thinking I'd like to make one, but without a lathe, you're up to nothing with these. And you can buy a set of machine castings for some of the Stuart Turner models, and basically then it's just a kit assembly, or you can get them pre-built, but they're bloody expensive. So I got this at a car boot sale, and I paid a very fair price, I think. The guy didn't seem to, well, no, he the guy knew what it was, um, but didn't have any respect for it, I think because he sold it to me with a Michutoyo set of engineer squares in a box and some other Moore and Wright tools 
for five pounds and he seemed happy with it and on the basis that I normally haggle to death at a car boot sale I thought this was too good a deal and just snapped it up. I doubt it's ever been run on steam. I suspect it's been made as a model by somebody who had an interest in it. They made a nice enough job of it as good as they could do, but they weren't probably 100% experienced in machining because of this free play. Like that seems to be an excessive amount of play on this side. It appears to be pivoting about this bearing, so we have an we have an excess of free play here, and it appears to be pivoting about this bearing. So I presume that this bearing is a relatively good bore fit, but this one here is a bit a bit sloppy. And I've thought about taking it asunder, but I don't particularly want to. I think it's one of these things that it's really just a toy. Quite an attractive toy, but just a toy. It came with some photographs. Photograph of the built model with a black uh, covering on the cylinder here. But I wonder, is that just a blacking on, on the metal? It might be brass or... I think it's brass, but just blacked up. And a set of working drawings there. You can almost get a shot of, but they're not particularly in focus in the first photo. So likewise, another photo of the same thing with the engine turned the other direction. And it's a mixture of, uh, that's a double a double steam engine, so I presume there's shared castings among some of these steam engines. And there's a couple of photos of the model before it was assembled. You can see the brass is much shinier there. There's a little piston. See the inlets there, the ports on the cylinder, and a little valve think that slides in and out from the eccentric to regulate the steam in and out. Quite a well presented little model. So my first thing to do whenever I got this was to see if it would run. So obviously you could turn it, it was a bit dirty, lots of fluff, fluff in between it all. So I've given it a cursory wipe down, taken the base off, cleaned out inside. So that wood there, there was a lot of fluff in there. So it had obviously been on a mantelpiece for many years, gathering dust. But I thought it's an attractive little toy. And I got it at a bargain price. I don't know what these really go for. It seems that on eBay they run over a hundred quid up to a couple of hundred or more. Whether or not that's a real price for one that has this much slop in it, it's hard to say. But if you just want something that runs on compressed air as a toy, that's fine. To get a boiler to run with this, I guess you could make up some kind of a electric boiler arrangement. So so you'd be able to steam it. But you get into issues of building pressure and stuff like that, so you'd need a pressure vessel that would handle steam. And like, well, you know, really, it wouldn't be that hard to create one uh, that isn't to scale. But for the purposes of testing, you might as well just run it on compressed air. So, let's get the valve attached. There is something boyish in me that would allow me to do this all day long. And we can see the wonder if you look at the top of the flywheel here. So then for the purposes of science, let's put a dial test indicator up on top and adjust that so that we can see zero. Let's 
get it zeroed in around there. And then let's spin this flywheel. 0.2. So it looks like 0.25 of a millimeter. That's what we're getting there. Of a run out. Up and down, and then if we do it side to side. And so then just have a look at the run out. Wow, that's quite a lot. You're getting up on 0.3 of a millimeter run out side to side. Point 0.4 almost. Oh, hang on. Going from 0.9 up to 0.4. You're getting half a millimeter of run out side to side on something like this. That's a lot. And yes, obviously, I calibrated that cheap Chinese dial test indicator. Regardless of the run out, it's still quite satisfying. It's quite a nice little toy. I could potter with this all day long. Bit of a kink in there in the pipe where it's been bent. That could have been a bit better. Wonder who made it. This is one of the things about toys that come to you from car boot sales. You never know who's been involved or what the story is. All right, there you go. Oh, let's just try one more thing. Let's see if I can do this. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me know any questions you have in the comments. Or if you've got any more information on these little things, just tell me about it. Thanks for watching. See you later.